All right, let's mix up some paint. You wanna make sure to have all your supplies ready. So I have my paints. Um, I also have my pouring medium. I have the Liquitex Gloss Professional Pouring Medium in this big jug. And then I also have some American Floetrol. Uh, you can find it. It's called Flood Floetrol. You can find it at your hardware store. This is not the container it comes in. It's just easier to manage in a smaller container for me. Oops. And then we have some plastic cups for mixing and some craft sticks to use to mix with. Some little cups for measuring your parts of paint versus your medium. I think I'm going to start with my dark purple paint first. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is add one part of paint. So I'm gonna fill up this little cup pretty much all the way to the very top. And then I'm going to add it into my larger plastic cup. The paint I'm using is the Master's Touch brand and that's Hobby Lobby's brand. Um, you can usually get them for a really good price when they're on sale and it's a pretty decent quality paint. Um, I've enjoyed using it. Now I'm going to add my pouring medium into my paint. This is the Liquitex and I'm going to add three parts to this paint. Now keep in mind if you are using a lower quality paint, something that's more like a craft paint, you're not going to be able to use as much pouring medium and you're not going to need as much pouring medium because it's already thinner and it's a bit more transparent. And so you have to definitely take into account the type of paint you're using. I personally haven't used uh, craft paints in pouring myself, so I don't know uh, what ratio you would want to use. That's something you would have to either look up or maybe uh, just experiment. I find that this uh, Master's Touch, and also I, often I will use Amsterdam, and um, sorry, what was the other? Ar Arteza, Arteza, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Oh, and also Artist Loft. These are all kind of mid-range range paints as far as quality and price. Um, they do work really well. I've had great success with them. Once that's combined, you're going to add some water. And this is to thin down your mixture even more to get the right consistency for your pouring project. So the amount of water will vary depending on your paint and your pouring medium. It will be best to start with a little bit at a time and then mix it up and check what your consistency is. Once you've had some practice, you'll have an idea how, how much water you need to use. I'm gonna show you um, what consistency I'm at right now. So you see when the paint hits the surface, it is sitting on top of the surface just a little bit. Um, it just sits there for maybe a second. I do want my paint a little bit thinner so I'm going to add some more water and I'm going to stir it up some more lots and lots of stirring in this process <laughs> and that looks just about perfect as consistency for what I want okay so here's another way you can use a squirt bottle and mix your paints directly in it the ones I have actually have little measuring markers along the side if you have squeeze bottles that don't have measuring, that's okay too. It can still be done this way. You will just have to measure your parts out and pour them into the squeeze bottle opposed to pouring them into a little plastic cup. Because this is a metallic paint, I'm actually going to be doing two parts medium. And the reason for that is that metallic paints are semi-transparent. They're lighter, um, so they're not gonna hold up to as much medium mixed in. Um, if you mix too much medium in, you're going to you're gonna lose some of that metallic effect that you, well, you want in metallic paints. That's why you use them. <laughs> also, in my experience, they tend to um, thin out faster. They, don't, they just don't need as much pouring medium. So I'm going to add the two parts. Um, the pouring medium is actually sitting right on top of the paint right now. So it's it's not mixing as I'm doing this, so it makes it a lot easier because I can 
follow the guides on the bottle and see exactly where the two parts are. Here, let me show you. See how the gold paint's just sitting there? And then on top, we've got the Liquitex. Once you do that, you're gonna put a lid on and you're gonna shake the heck out of it. And then you're gonna repeat the process of just adding a little bit of water at a time to get the right consistency. I'm gonna do one more and it's sped up. I'm using Floatrol on this one because this is going to be my base coat for the project I'm working on tomorrow. You don't need a base coat in all pores, but for what I'm doing specifically, I do. And it's a large canvas, so that's why I've chose to use Floatrol. Um, Liquitex pouring medium is not cheap, especially compared to Floatrol. That's why I choose to use Floatrol in my base coat. I've mixed two colors together to get um, the color that I want. I wanted a custom color, and I should have used a bigger cup. Uh, I'm going to make a mess. I just know it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I am a messy, messy person when it comes to painting, so this is no big surprise here. This is why you should wear gloves. It's always a great idea to check your consistency when you're done mixing your paints. So this is especially for beginners, I would suggest this. Consistency makes a big difference in the outcome of your pour. And to do this, just take any kind of scrap paper, cardboard, whatever you have, make little even size puddles side by side on your paper with the paint that you'll be using. Once you have your puddles there, you're going to just tilt your paper up like so and watch your paint flow. Already I can tell that the gold is too thick. Um, so when you run into that, all you have to do is add a little bit more water to that specific color and then you can retest and see if your consistencies are closer. I hope this video was helpful and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below and I will do my best to answer. Thanks for watching.